Hey folks, this is Vent with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Dominari Empires. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about five bucks. So there's a little bit of history with this one. This game used to be called Dominari Tournament, if I remember correctly, and it used to have multiplayer. That's no longer the case. The developer has gotten rid of the server thing and has opted for a single player only game against the AI. So it dropped in price as a result of that. It's kind of a shame, too. I really enjoyed playing multiplayer. But anyway, Dominari Empires. What is it? It's a real-time strategy game similar to that of, say, Euphoria, where you generate resources over time, mainly ships, and you're going to be sending these ships out trying to capture other planets. Okay? So the game starts you off. You can either play an AI duel or challenges. And in the AI duel, there's 10 different difficulty settings. Even the easiest is pretty challenging. Um, so it would have been nice to have a little bit of balance there. I would have liked to have seen the AI be a bit more passive on the earlier levels. But anyway, so once you, you're happy with your decision, typically you start off with one planet and your opponent starts off with one planet and then you just start automatically generating ships. You're going to send those ships to nearby planets, capture those, and they will start generating ships. So there's a snowball effect going on. The more planets you capture, the more ships you produce. Okay, I've seen this kind of game before. Now what separates this game from other games I've played is that it sort of takes that whole concept to the next level. You generate a resource that you can spend, and you earn this over time in order to activate various abilities. There's like 20 in all. One ability uh, might be to upgrade a planet. A planet can either be producing economy or ships. In, in fact, it always produces both, but um, if you upgrade one, um, then it takes away from the other one. So if you upgrade its ships, for example, its ship production, so it produces ship faster, it'll lower the economy rating of that planet, okay, until it's just one dot. So you can have some planets that are like three dots high economy-wise and three dots high uh, military-wise, but you'll never have both three dots and three dots. You have to sort of pick and choose what planets you want to be economic, which to be military. Your home planet is the only one that has um, three on either side, but that's, I think it's military focused. Anyway, so you can upgrade planets either for military focus or economic focus, which is cool. You can put one orbital um, in, ev on, in every planet. And these orbitals do different things. So there's an orbital that sort of just reveals an area. There's an orbital that will buff surrounding planets to make it more economical so that it'll, it'll produce resources more quickly for you so that's good there's another orbital that will zap any ships that come into range of it so it's more of a defensive orbital another orbital just opens up other options okay these orbitals are prerequisites for some of the abilities that you'll have access to later on in the game um, other abilities include uh, reinforcements, like you can uh, reinforce a planet instantly with ships should you need to. There's a star base that you can build, so if, you, if you're trying to get from one planet to another without having to go through four others, you can build a star base in between and then use the star base as a go-between and send ships that way. That's kind of cool. The star base can be destroyed. Um, you'll be able to fire missiles and other offensive weaponry at other planets. You can build these defensive platforms on your planets um, so that the enemy ships have to get through them first before they start ticking away at your ships that you have on that planet defending it. Um, and there's some other ones too. In addition to all of that, there is an upgrade feature. You'll be able to upgrade these abilities. Of course, there's a timer with this upgrade button, and it does cost resources, but you can make abilities cheaper or more powerful. Um, so you have to sort of decide, okay, do I want to rush and throw everything at them as much as possible? Uh, do I want to, like, go, you know, hold back a little bit and upgrade all my skills and then just dominate them? There's a lot of strategy here, and there's a lot of different ways to play this. Um, like I said, I wish the AI were a bit more easy on the easier difficulty settings to give a new player a chance to get acclimated. There is a tutorial and, and stuff like that, but typically um, you're going to get your feet wet, you're going to get smashed your first couple of games with the AI until you get a handle on what all these abilities do, what the different uh, orbitals do, uh, how best to place them, then you start developing strategies. Um, it would have been nice to have a random... Uh, you know, the ability to to customize your map setup a bit. The game just throws you into a randomized map setup. 
Um, it would have been nice to, to specify, I want 50 planets in this map, or I want 25 or 20. No, it's just a random map every time. Uh, same amount of planets, just different configuration. So for $5, however, um, I think this is worth uh, getting. I, I think this is definitely worth picking up. Um, my only complaint really is that um, the developer went away from the server thing because it was too expensive or whatnot. Um, I want to see a Dominary Empires 2 with multiplayer, more customization options, maybe even some sort of permanent progression system so that your empire gets more powerful with every game that you play, sort of like a roguelite. You know what I mean? I would like to see something like that. I, I sincerely hope the, devel the developer decides to do that. This game was published back in 2018, and it's been three years, so I doubt it. But hey, you never know. I, I can hope. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.